Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to have a couple of things to discuss. So we continue on with our game review video. We're recapping the games that happened on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and previewing the games ahead for Tuesday and Wednesday. With we'll all those game reviews, game recaps, and all the other things coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Internet Talking Channel. Before we get into this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. We are so close to 100 subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I would never be able to do this without you guys, so don't forget to subscribe. Now, I'm going to start this video off by discussing a couple of game reviews from the past couple of days. We've had a pretty busy past couple of days. After our 15 game day Friday, which we talked about in our last video, uh, we had 8 games on Saturday, we had 5 games on Sunday, and 6 games on Monday yesterday. So, we'll get to all those games uh, right here. Saturday, we had eight games on the NHL schedule. Uh, it started off with the New York Rangers team and the Boston Bruins. The two best teams in the Eastern Conference went head-to-head. -head. And in this one, it was the New York Rangers who came away with the victory. Rangers looked like they were the better team the entire time. They got a couple of leads, were able to hold on to those leads. Wound up being the Boston Bruins 7-4. to four. So it was a fantastic win for New York Rangers. Rangers improved to 15-3-1, dropping the Boston Bruins to 14-3-3. Bruins, for first time this season, have had back-to-back -back regulation losses, so not overly great news there for Boston, but they definitely did play really well against the Rangers. It was just the Rangers were a better team at this point in time. Both Chris Kreider, who had two goals in the assist, and Artemi Panarin, who had a goal two assists, had three-point nights. VC had a goal in the assist. Benino, Pilik, both their first goals as members of the New York Rangers. And Keandre Miller also scored for the Rangers in the win, while Coyle scored twice, Gigi had a goal and an assist, James and Riemsdijk had two assists, and Pasternak also scored for the Bruins in the loss. So definitely, this was a really good game. Both teams had fantastic games, but it was the Rangers who came away with a 7-4 victory. So fantastic win there for the Rangers. They looked dominant. Their offense was clicking. Uh, their defense wasn't as good, but they're playing a Boston Bruins team, which is really good too. So they held them to as little as they could, and the offense was able to get them the win. So fantastic game there from the Rangers to not only win this game, but propel themselves into top spots in the Eastern Conference. Uh, they were in sole possession of the first spot in the Eastern Conference. Then you had the LA Kings take on the Montreal Canadiens, and this was all Kings all the time. They got out to an early 2-0 lead, wound up being the Canadiens 4-0 to improve to 13-3-3, dropping the Canadiens to 9-10-2. Not too surprised that that happened. The Canadiens are still a team who's Hovering around the 500 mark, not doing overly good. And the Kings are a team who's absolutely uh, laying out all the teams in front of them. Uh, Kings were able to get two goals from uh, Trevor Moore, two assists from Pierre-Luc Dubois. Lewis and uh, Grenstrom also scored for the uh, LA Kings. And Copley stopped all 18 shots he faced in the shutout. So definitely, Copley was fantastic. This was probably the best game of his season so far. So good news for Copley. Uh, if they can get Copley going as well as Talbot, that would be a fantastic lethal tandem for the uh, LA Kings. Uh, Moore continues his strong play as well as Dubois at the start of the season, this team looks really good. The offense looks good, their defense looks good, they have two really good goaltenders if they're playing at really well at the same time. This King team looks great. Uh, so the Kings look really good, Canadians didn't look overly good, but I think they could definitely improve. So definitely good things there for the Kings and the Canadians in that game. Then we have the New Jersey Devils who are on a little bit of a falling spree right at that point. I think they lost like five or six of their last six or seven games. They've not been doing overly well. They needed a win. They got a win. And they got a very dominant win over the Buffalo Sabres. Devils beat Sabres 7-2. Improving back up to net 500 at 9-9-1. Dropping the Sabres to 9-10-2. So definitely not great news for Sabres who had just reached back up to 500. We'll get to them in a second again as they play another game over these past three days. Uh, but in this game it was not a really good game from the Sabres. They defense did not look overly great uh, and their offense while they did get two goals was not overly fantastic either the Devils have fantastic offensive performance the Foley scored twice he sure Mercer Holtz Platt Luke Hughes all had a goal and assists and both Hamilton and Brad had two assists for the Devils in the win while Skinner and Opposal were two goal scorers for the Sabres in the loss. Definitely. It was not a fantastic showing there from Buffalo, but it was a very good performance there from the Devils and a much needed one at that. That was a huge win there for the Devils to absolutely dominate the Buffalo Sabres and get a, a very big win for their team. So, Devils improved to 500. Sabres dropped down to under 500 at Y1 game. So, not great for the Sabres, but we'll get to them in a second as they play another game. But huge game from the Devils. Also, at 4 o'clock on Saturday, we had the Pittsburgh 
Pittsburgh Penguins take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. A really good back and forth action. I think the Penguins opened the scoring, uh, but the Leafs were able to get a 2-1 lead. But then two second period goals, including this one here, late in the third period by Eric Carlson, remember all clips of credit Sportsnet. But Eric Carlson broke a 2-2 tie late in the second period to give the Penguins a 3-2 lead, and their defense would hold on and shut down the Maple Leafs offense as they would win this game 3-2 to improve to 500 in their first 20 games at 10-10-0. Leafs dropped down to 10-6-3. So not great news for the Leafs. Uh, but definitely still is not overly bad for the record for the Leafs. Uh, for the Penguins, fantastic game. They had a really good game. They were able to come back from down 2-1, and they held on for a 3-2 victory. Uh, for the Penguins, Carlson, Achari, and Gensel were the three goal scorers for the Penguins in the win, while Niles and Bertuzzi were the two goal scorers for the Leafs in the loss. Definitely. It was a really close game. These two teams looked really evenly matched, uh, but the Penguins, who had been slumping for a little bit, uh, find themselves with a win, a much-needed win to get themselves back up to 500, so good news for the Penguins. For the Leafs, not overly great loss, dropping a 3-2 game to the Pittsburgh Penguins, which isn't overly great, but it was a close game, and I think they did all right. So, really interesting game there between the Pens and the Leafs. Then we had another couple of interesting games. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers and New York Islanders played a very slow, low-scoring game. Uh, there was no scoring until the fourth round of the shootout when Tyson Forrester would break the shutout and wind up giving the Philadelphia Flyers the win. Flyers win one nothing in the shootout over the New York Islanders. Uh, like we said, Forrester, lone shootout goal scorer. Urson stopped all 25 shots he faced in the win. Sorokin stopped all 40 shots he faced in regulation and in uh, overtime and stopped three or four shots in the shootout. So both goalies were fantastic in this game. Both Sorokin and Urson really kept this game really, really close. And Forrester was the only goal scorer and it came in the shootout. So that just tells you how low scoring of a fair it was between these two games. So Flyers wound up coming with it the win. Less than a week after the Islanders beat the Flyers to start the uh, Flyers on a two-game losing streak. Uh, the Flyers improved to 11-9-1 with the win. Huge win for them there. The Islanders dropped to 8-6-6. Six, and six. So Islanders are still above 500. They're not doing overly great this year, but they're still in the playoff spot at this point in time, I think. Maybe just out of the playoff spot, above 500. Good to see Philadelphia get another win, but it'll be interesting to see if they're able to keep up this pace. And then we had the Avalanche jump out to a 2-0 lead and wind up being the Calgary Flames 3-1. Huge win there for the Avalanche to keep up their uh, toward paces throughout the season. They're up to 14-6-0. Flames, meanwhile, dropped back down to 8-10-3. So not great game there from the Flames. They have another game that we'll talk about in a second two. Uh, the Flames uh, lone goal scorer was uh, Mikel Backlund well for the Avalanche. McKinnon had goal and assist. Duran and Johansson also scored for the Avalanche in the win. So definitely it was a fantastic game. Uh, the offseason additions are really paying dividends for the Avalanche right now and they look really really lethal. The offense is clicking on all cylinders. Their goal is doing pretty good so far this year and they look like a pretty decent team. So good news there for the Avalanche to get a huge win over the Calgary Flames 3-1. Then the other two games to finish up the Saturday portion of the schedule, uh, the San Jose Sharks were able to beat the Vancouver Canucks 4-3, a very surprising win for the San Jose Sharks against a really hot Vancouver team. Uh, San Jose was able to improve to 4-15-2, dropping the Vancouver Canucks to 14-7-1. So it was a really good game there from the San Jose Sharks. Hoffman and Granlin both had goal and a assist. Hurdle and Addison both had two assists. And this goal here, which opened the scoring in this game, and was Emerson's first career NHL goal. So a fantastic goal for Emerson to get his first goal of his career, and good to see that uh, on the Sharks' blue line. Uh, but Emerson with his first career goal, as well as Fabian Zetterlund, were the other two goal scorers for the Sharks in the win. But for the Canucks, Miller had three assists, Bethler scored twice, and Hironic had a goal and an assist for the Canucks in the loss. So definitely, it was a really close game. The Canucks' big players came through. Uh, they had two goals called off in this uh, night. So not overly great for Vancouver, and it seemed like everything was against them in this game. But it was the Sharks who came away with the victory. So a fantastic win for the Sharks to improve their record, while well, the Canucks do wind up dropping theirs. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes would break a late tie and wind up being the Vegas Golden Knights 2-0. Huge win there for the Arizona Coyotes to improve back up to 500 at the 20 game mark at 9-9-2. and while well, the Golden Knights dropped down to 14-5-2 and on the season, so that's not fantastic news for them. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes got Keller and Kroos as their two goal scorers, and Ingram stopped all 34 shots he faced in the shutout victory. So definitely fantastic news for the Arizona Coyotes who could really use that win. They're back in the race for the playoff spot, so fantastic news for Arizona. Vegas continues to slump after having, I think, 11-0-1 start. It was this season. They're now 3-5-1 in their last uh, nine games. 
so they're not doing overly well right now. So they could definitely use some more uh, confidence in their uh, offense because their offense isn't doing overly well right now. But definitely, Knights did not look overly good on the offensive side of things. Well, the Coyotes definitely did some really good stuff, uh, shutting down the offensive uh, capabilities of the Gold Knights and scoring a couple of late goals to give themselves a 2 nothing victory. So fantastic news for Arizona. Then we uh, go over to Sunday's games. There were five games on Sunday. Uh, to start off with, the, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, be the Minnesota Wild, 4-1. Wings have now won three straight games since coming over from Sweden. Wild lose yet another game, and this one cost Dean Everson his job. We'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but the Minnesota Wild did wind up firing Dean Everson yesterday, so this was the last game for Dean Everson on the bench. Uh, Detroit improves to 11-6-3. Wild dropped down to 5-10-4, which is absolutely... a abysmal uh, start given the fact that this team in my opinion the Wild were a likely pick to be third in the Central this year, so I'm quite surprised by their start. Uh, the Red Wings were able to get a four-point night from Shane Gossip with a goal and three assists. Perron scored twice, and Larkin had a goal and eight assist for Red Wings in the win, while Eric Sinek had the lone goal score for the Wild in the loss. Definitely, it was not a great game there from the Wild. They once again fell behind uh, early, and they were not able to get back in the game, and it was not a great showing there from Minnesota. Detroit, once again, fantastic performance. Like I said, three straight wins since coming over from Sweden. Fantastic stuff there from the Red Wings as they're really hot right now. So really good win there for the Wings. Uh, the St. Louis Blues beat the Chicago Blackhawks 4-2 to improve to 11-8-1, dropping the Hawks to 6-13-0. So fantastic win there for the Blues, who after a bad loss to Nashville could really use a win. So a fantastic win there for St. Louis. Uh, Buchnevich had a 3 point out with a goal and 2 assists. Neighbors scored twice. Both Thomas and Krug had 2 assists and Hazel to score for the Blues in the win. Well, for the Blackhawks, Donato had goal and assist. assists. Kayser had 2 assists. And Kachok also scored for the Blackhawks in the uh, loss. So definitely, it was not bad showing there from the Blackhawks. They would make a close late in the game, making a 4-2 game, but it was a little too, a little too late. Uh, the Blues definitely looked at the better team, and I think the Blues at this point in time are the better team. So fantastic stuff there from St. Louis. Really good things there for the Blues to get the win over the Blackhawks. Then we had the Carolina Hurricanes, who were down 2 nothing to the Columbus Blue Jackets midway through the third period. We'll get three consecutive goals. Right from Jasperi Kakaniemi, one from uh, Brady Shea, and then this goal here, which broke the tie very late in the third period from Andrei Svechnikov, will give the Carolina Hurricanes a solid 3-2 regulation win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, Jackets were looking for their third straight win, could not get it at that point in time. Uh, we'll get to them uh, a little bit later too as they had another game, uh, but the Jackets could not get the win in this game. Huge win there for the Carolina Hurricanes to improve to their record to 12-8-1 in their first 20 games. Jackets dropped down to 6-12-4. So it's a pretty great performance there from the Canes to come back. It was not a great start, and they shouldn't have been down 2 nothing to start with, but they found their resiliency and were able to get the huge 3-2 win. Uh, Svechnikov had a goal and an assist. Jarvis had two assists. Kukunyemi and Shea also scored for the Canes in the win. But for the Jackets, Goudreau had a goal and an assist, and Marchenko also scored for the Jackets in the loss. So it was a really good showing there from the Jackets, too. If they had hold on for the win, that would have been three straight wins. Uh, but the Canes are a really good team, and they showed it by coming back from down 2 nothing. So fantastic stuff there from the Canes. Uh, the National Predators would go out to a 3 nothing lead and hold on for a 3-2 victory over the Winnipeg Jets. Preds are up to a 5-game winning streak and have gone back up to 500 at 10-10-0, dropping the Winnipeg Jets to 12-6-2 on the season. Uh, Yossi has a 3.9 with a goal and 2 assists. Trenin and Nyquist both also scored for the Preds in the win, while Perfetti and Morrissey were two goal scorers for the Jets in the loss. So it was not bad a performance there from the Winnipeg Jets. They definitely made it interesting later on in the game, but the Preds were able to go to a 3-0 lead and they did hold on for the victory. So Predators continue to win. They look fantastic right now, and they look like they're going to be competing for a playoff spot at this point in time. Uh, as for the Winnipeg Jets, not a fantastic showing. Like I said, they showed their resiliency by making this a close game, but they shouldn't have been down 3-0 in the first place so interesting game but the Preds were able to come away with the victory then they had the Edmonton Oilers obliterate the Anaheim Ducks 8-2 to this game had the two two score line 10 minutes into the game and then the Edmonton Oilers would run away with six consecutive goals fantastic stuff there for the Edmonton Oilers they improved to 7-12-1 in their first 20 games Ducks dropped to 9-12-0 no now. So not great stuff there from Anaheim as they continue to fall a little bit right now. Uh, McDavid had a 5.0 with a goal and 4 assists. 
Hyman, two goals and assist, and Nurse, three assists, both had three point nights. Dry Settle and Kane both had a goal and a assist. DeHarnay had two assists, and Ekholm, Hamblin, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins also scored for the Oilers in the win. Well, Max Jones got both Ducks goals in the loss. So definitely, it was not great from the Anaheim Ducks, and they continued to lose. Uh, but definitely, it was a fantastic game from the Edmonton Oilers, and they looked like a pretty good team in this one. So, fantastic stuff there from Edmonton to improve their record to only five games below 500 now and have back-to-back -back wins. Then yesterday, we had six games. Some really interesting ones there, too. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets became the first team in NHL history to have four different Russian players score in the same game as they were able to trounce the Boston Bruins, who have now lost three straight regulation games, 5-2. Bruins dropped to 14-4-3, and, and the Jackets improved to 7-12-4. So after the loss to the Carolina Hurricanes, that was a really good bounce-back performance from the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Chinakov had a goal and an assist. Jenner had two assists, and then Voronkov, Danforth, Marchenko, and Provorov also scored for the Jackets in the win. And Poitra and Beecher were the two goal scorers for the Bruins in the loss. So definitely, it was not a great game from the Boston Bruins. Uh, they would make it somewhat interesting later in the game, making it a, a three-goal game a couple of times. But this was a big win for the Jackets. They got up to an early 3 nothing lead in the second period. They were able to get a huge boost there from the Russian players and they held on for the big victory. So that was a fantastic game for the Jackets who have now won 3 of 4 and are not looking overly bad right now. Uh, as for the uh, Boston Bruins, not great news. They've now lost 3 straight games to the Red Wings, Rangers and Jackets. They have an easier game I think coming up against the San Jose Sharks in the not just in the future so that should be an easier game that they should be able to win. But they've not done overly well over the past couple of games. So they're going to need to start to try and right the ship. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres turned in an impressive performance. Scored three th late goals to put this game to bed and beat the New York Rangers 5-1. to one To go back up to 500 at 10-10-2. Dropping the Rangers to 15-4-1. So fantastic stuff there from the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Sabres were able to get a 3 point night from Casey Mills. Had a goal to assists. Tuck scored twice. Power and Olofsson both had two assists. And Opozo and Paterka also scored for the Sabres in the win. Well, Zabanja was a long goal scorer for the Rangers in the loss. So definitely. It was not a fantastic showing from the Rangers. But Uka Pekalukunen in net was a fantastic player in this game. Made a whole bunch of unreal saves. And he definitely kept the Sabres in the lead in this game when it was a close 2-1 score. So uh, the play of UPL plus the offense really put this game away and gave the Sabres a huge win to get back up to 500. Then the uh, Florida Panthers were able to beat the Ottawa Senators. Uh, five nothing and improved to thirteen seven and one, dropping the Sens to eight nine and zero. So Sens have now lost back to back games. Don't look overly good right now. Panthers after back to back losses were able to get back on the winning side of things. Uh, Barkov had three assists tonight. Reinhardt scored twice. Bennett had a goal and an assist. And Verhage and Louis Torainen also scored for the Panthers in the win. While Bobrovsky stopped all twenty shots he faced in the shutout. So fantastic game from Bobrovsky. The Panthers defense shut down the uh, Senators offense. And this was a very fantastic game from the Florida Panthers. Uh, the offense looked good, Reinhardt continues to produce, Barkov looked good, and this Pan Florida Panthers team gets a huge victory over the Ottawa Senators. So fantastic win there from Florida. The Avalanche were able to build up a 3-0 lead and down the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning 4-1 to improve to 15-6-0, dropping the Bolts to 10-7-5. So not a great showing there from the Tampa Bay Lightning who do lose in a 2022 Stanley Cup Final rematch. The Avalanche were able to get two goals from Ryan Johansson, a goal and an assist from Makar, two assists from McKinnon, and Nichushkin also scored for the Avalanche in the win, while Sorelli was a lone goal scorer for the Bolts in the loss. So not a great showing there from the Tampa Bay Lightning, but definitely it was a fantastic game. The Bolts did look good at times, but it was the Avalanche to come away with the victory. Then the uh, Calgary Flames, who were down one nothing in the first period, were able to come back and beat the Vegas Golden Knights 2-1 in overtime. Another good win there from the Calgary Flames in this uh, long stretch of very tough games. Like we said, they're having five straight games against four of the best teams in the Western Conference. They already beat Dallas, they've now beat Vegas in overtime, and they lost to the Avalanche. So they've already gone 2-1-0, which is very, very good. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to keep this up. Flames were able to get goals from Greer and Weger, who had the OT winner, while Carlson was the lone goal scorer for Vegas in the OT loss. Not a great showing there from Vegas, who dropped to 14-5-3 on the season. Well, the Flames with the win are now back up to, once again, one game below 500 at 9-10-3. and So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to get back to 500, uh, if they can be able to win their next game, or are they going to stay two games below 500, uh, like they've been doing over the past little while. So it'll be interesting to see. This was a fantastic game from the Flames to stay around until the th tying goal in the third period, and then get the OT victory over a very difficult Vegas opponent. So it'll be interesting to see how they do next, but a very good win there for the Flames in overtime. And the Sounds Sharks 
thanks to this late a tie-breaking goal from Luke Cunnan got a huge win and they've won back-to-back -back games. The Sharks won back-to-back -back games for a second time this season with a 2-1 victory over the Washington Capitals. Sharks improved to 5-15-2, dropping the Capitals to 10-6-2. So it was not a fantastic performance there from the Capitals. Uh, the last time these two played, it sort of was a similar uh, storyline. Uh, the Sharks were 1-0 uh, after 2. It looked like this would be the best shot for Sharks to win a game at that point in time. And then the Caps scored 3 straight in the third period to uh, wind up winning that game. This was another close, low-scoring game, but the Sharks this time were able to come away with a victory instead of the Capitals. Uh, Kunin and Zetterlund were two goal scorers for the Sharks in the win, while Kuznetsov was a lone goal scorer for the Capitals in the loss. So it was not a great showing there from the Capitals, but definitely the Sharks had a better game, and they are now one back-to-back -back game. So fantastic win there for the Sharks, but that's all of the game reviews. Going over to a couple of teams' 20-game reviews uh, from over the weekend, uh, there's a couple of teams that hit the 20-game mark. Uh, first, the Boston Bruins. They hit the 20-game mark. They have a 14-3-3 record for 31 points, 69 goals for, 50 goals against, a plus-19 rating. Not too bad. They look one of the better teams in the NHL right now. Uh, players with 14 or more points uh, at the 20-game mark. James Van Riemsdyk has 5 goals, 10 assists, 15 points. Zaka has 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points. Marchand has 7 goals, 12 assists, 19 points. Coyle has 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. Both Marchand and Coyle are on pace for 78 points. And then Pasternak's the real leader on this team with 13 goals, 18 assists, 31 points. He's on pace for 53 goals and 127 points. So definitely, Pasternak's been absolutely phenomenal to start of the season for the Boston Bruins. And it's been a huge reason why they're so good in their first 20 games. Then we have the Pittsburgh Penguins at 20 game mark. Uh, they finished the 20 game mark at 10 10 0 uh, record for uh, 20 points in 20 games. 63 goals for, 52 goals against, a plus 11 rating. So fantastic stuff there from the Penguins. Players who had 14 points or more at the 20 game mark. Rust has 9 goals, 7 assists, 16 points. Carlson has 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points. Malkin has 9 goals, 9 assists, 18 points. Gensel has 7 goals. 16 assists, 23 points, he's on pace for 95 points. And Crosby has 13 goals, 11 assists, 24 points, he's on pace for 53 goals and 98 points. So definitely, Crosby's done fantastic, Gintel's done fantastic, and those two are really leading the charge on that Penguins offense right now. Uh, the New York Islanders finished the 20 game mark at 8, 6, and 6 for 22 points. 52 goals for, 62 goals against, a minus 10 rating, so not doing overly good in the plus minus category. Uh, Horvat had 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points. Barzell, 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points. Same with Dobson, 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points. And Nelson has 10 goals, 6 assists, 16 points. All three of Nelson, Dobson, Barzell are on pace for 66 points, with Nelson having on pace for 41 goals. So not bad, but there's no real... Uh, absolutely fantastic numbers there from any of those players at the 20 game mark so Isles look all right but they don't look fantastic uh, then you go to the Colorado Avalanche to 20 game mark they're 14-6-0 for 28 points uh, probably the best team in the central division I think right now players who have 14 points or more at the 20 game mark Natchushkin has 9 goals 10 assists 19 points uh, he's on pace for 78 points. Randon has 12 goals, 14 assists, 26 points. He's on pace for 49 goals and 106 points. McKinnon has 7 goals, 19 assists, 26 points. He's on pace for 107 points. And then McCarr has 5 goals, 25 assists, 30 uh, points. He's on pace for 103 assists and 124 points. So definitely, McCarr continues to be really good. So is McKinnon and Randon. And Nechushkin's having a fantastic season, nearly at a point per game rate. So... Avalanche look pretty good right now. Now uh, looking at the Coyotes uh, at the 20 game mark, they're nine and two, nine and two for 20 points. Not doing overly bad. Uh, 65 goals for, 63 goals against, a plus two rating. Uh, at this point, for players with 14 or more points at the 20 game mark. Uh, Bukes has four goals, 10 assists, 14 points. Michelli has three goals, 13 assists, 16 points. Schmelz has five goals, 11 assists, 16 points, and then Keller has eight goals, 11 assists, 19 points. He's on pace for 78 points. So not as good as he did last year, but he's on pace for a lot of points this year, so Coyotes are not doing overly bad. Then you look at the St. Louis Blues. At the 20 game mark, they are 11, 8, and 1 for 23 points. 60 goals for, 62 goals against, a minus 2 rating. Players with 14 points or more at the 20 game mark. Abuchinevich has 8 goals, 8 assists, 16 points. And Thomas has 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. Thomas is on pace for 90 points. So that would be a fantastic uh, point total there for Thomas if he was able to hit it. Then for the Detroit Red Wings, uh, they have an 11, 6, and 3 record at the 20 game mark for 25 points. 74 goals for, 60 goals against, a plus 14 rating. Players with 14 or more points at the 20 game mark. Uh, Raymond has 8 goals, 8 assists, 16 points. 
Confer has four goals, 13 assists, 17 points. Uh, Gossip Bear has five goals, 13 assists, 18 points. On pace for 74 points as a defenseman. Uh, Debrinket has 12 goals, 8 assists, 20 points. He's on a point bringing pace and on pace for 49 goals. And then Larkin has eight goals, 13 assists, 21 points. He's on pace for 86 points. So definitely, Red Wings look pretty good right now at the 20 game mark. The Carolina Hurricanes at the 20 game mark are 12 0 no for 24 points. They have 67 goals for 67 goals against even rating, so not overly bad there. Uh, players who have 14 or more points at the 20 game mark. Shea has 3 goals, 11 assists, 14 points. Nations has 6 goals, 8 assists, 14 points. Kakaniemi has 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. Teravainen has 10 goals, 5 assists, 15 points on pace for 41 goals. Uh, Aho has 5 goals, 12 assists, 17 points. And Jarvis has 8 goals, 9 assists, 17 points. Aho and Jarvis on pace for 70 points. So, not bad stuff there from the Carolina Hurricanes. Then from the National Predators, uh, the Preds had a 10-10-0 rating at the 20 game mark for 20 points, 67 goals for 64 goals against a plus 3 rating. Uh, Nyquist had 3 goals, 12 assists, 15 points. Yossi has 4 goals, 11 assists, 15 points. O'Reilly has 10 goals, 8 assists, 18 points on pace for 41 goals. And Forsberg has 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. He's on pace for 45 goals and 102 points. So Forsberg looks absolutely fantastic right now for the National Predators. Then for the Winnipeg Jets, they have a 12-6-2 record at the 20-game mark. 71 goals for 59 goals against a plus-12 rating. Uh, players who have hit over 14 points or more at this point in time. Uh, Niederreiter has 6 goals, 8 assists, 14 points. Uh, Appleton has 6 goals, 9 assists, 15 points. Perfetti has 7 goals, 10 assists, 17 points. Morrissey has 4 goals, 15 assists, 19 points on pace for 78 points. Connor has 14 goals, 9 assists, 23 points on pace for 57 goals and 94 points. And Shifley has 7 goals, 16 assists, 23 points on pace for 95 points. Definitely. Shifley and Connor continue to produce really, really well, as does Josh Morrissey. Edmonton Oilers are 7 12 and 1 for 15 points at the 20 game mark. Players with 14 points or more at the 20 game mark. Uh, RNH has 5 goals, 13 assists, 18 points. Vander Kane has 10 goals, 9 assists, 19 points on pace for uh, 41 goals. Bouchard has 5 goals, 15 assists, 20 points on a point per game pace. Hyman has 12 goals, 10 assists, 22 points on pace for 90 points and 49 goals. Uh, McDavid has 7 goals, 18 assists, 25 points on pace for 103 points. And Drysdale has 9 goals. 19 assists, 28 points, and he's on pace for 115 points. Not too bad there for the Oilers. And then lastly here with the New York Rangers, uh, they are 15-4-1 for 31 points at this uh, 20 game mark. 67 goals for 50 goals against a plus 17 rating. Gustafsson has 3 goals, 2 of assists, and 15 points. Zabanja has 5 goals, 10 assists, 15 points. Trojic has 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points. Uh, Crowder has 13 goals, 7 assists, 20 points on a point per game pace, and is on pace for 53 goals. And then Panarin has 11 goals, 19 assists, 30 points, he's on pace for 45 goals, and 123 points. So definitely, lots of interesting stuff there. Uh, like we talked about in our previous videos, if you have usually over 25 or 28 points, you're almost guaranteed to make the playoffs. Whereas if you have under a 500 record or under 16 points, you're very light, unlikely to make the playoffs. So if you look at these teams, uh, Rangers have over 31 points. They have probably have around a 90% chance to make the playoffs at this point in time. The Oilers only have 15 points. No team in the last eight years, uh, disregarding the COVID seasons, has made the uh, playoffs as a starting with 16 points or lower. So I'm not liking the Edmonton Oilers odds right now. Uh, the Jets have 26 points, so they have probably around an 85% chance of making the playoffs. Uh, the Predators have a 20 points. They're right around 500. The uh, Carolina Hurricanes are 24 points. They're not doing overly bad this year either. Coyotes are also at 20 points, not doing overly bad. Uh, the Avalanche have 28 points. They have probably around a 90% chance of making the playoffs. Islanders have 22 points. Uh, they're around the middle right now, as are the 20-point Penguins. Uh, and the 31-point Bruins are probably also in the 90% uh, to make the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see, but those are teams who have hit the 20 game mark. Uh, so definitely, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of them do. I think there's only eight teams left who've yet to reach the 20 game mark. That is the Leafs and the Sanders in the Atlantic. That is the Caps and the Devils in the uh, Metro. That is the LA Kings in the Pacific. And that is the Stars, the Wild, and the Blackhawks in the Central. So it'll be interesting to see how those teams do. Uh, but those are your 20 game reviews from the past couple of days. Going over to a quick game preview for the next couple of days and a quick look at the standings. I look at the game preview today. We have 10 games on the schedule. Uh, the Islanders take on the Devils. Devs looking to get back up to above 500. Islanders looking to keep a playoff spot and keep in contention for a playoff spot and looking to avoid back to back losses. Uh, the Panthers take on the Maple Leafs. A rematch of last year's uh, second round matchup. Panthers looking to uh, creep closer to the Boston Bruins. Leafs looking to hit uh, 25 points at the 20 game mark.
Uh, the Canes take on the Flyers. Canes looking to uh, improve their record in the Metro Division, who's right on their heels in the Metro Division, so that'll be a really interesting game. At 5 o'clock, we have three games, including two Central Division matchups. Uh, new uh, coach John Hines in Minnesota will look to get his first win as a coach of the Minnesota Wild, taking on the St. Louis Blues team that's looking to keep ahead of teams like National and Arizona in the Central. Uh, the National Predators and Pittsburgh Penguins, who both have 10 10 0 records, look to get above 500 uh, for the first time in a little while, so it'll be interesting to see who was able to get the over 500. Two of the top three teams in the Central Division in Dallas and Winnipeg take on each other. Dallas looking to improve to uh, 28 points and get closer to the Avalanche. Jets, same sort of thing, looking to get 20 points, get closer to the Avalanche. At 5.30, we have the Kraken taking on the Hawks. Kraken looking to get back up to 500. Hawks looking to avoid yet another loss. Uh, at 6 o'clock, we have the Arizona Coyotes looking to get to above 500, take on the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are looking to uh, improve in their record in the Atlantic Division. At 6 o'clock, we have a huge rematch of last year's second round series between the Golden Knights and the Oilers. Oilers looking for their third straight win. Knights looking to avoid yet another loss. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. And then the Anaheim Ducks take on the Vancouver Canucks. Ducks looking to uh, end this losing streak of theirs. Canucks looking to recover after losing to the San Jose Sharks badly on Saturday. So it'll be interesting to see how those games go. And then we have three games tomorrow. Not too much action. Uh, the Canadians will take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Canadians looking to get up to 500. Jackets looking to win their fourth in the last five games. The Red Wings take on the Rangers. Rangers looking to keep ahead of teams like Boston and Vegas for top spot in the uh, NHL, while the Detroit Red Wings look for their fourth straight win. And then at 7.30, we have the Capitals take on the Kings. Capitals looking to avoid a third straight loss, while the Kings look to get even closer to teams like Vegas and Vancouver in the top end of the Pacific Division. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. But those are your game previews for the next couple of days. Quick look at the standings here. As of today, uh, Boston has 31 points leading the Atlantic Division, followed by 27 point Florida and 25 point Detroit. 31 point New York R leads the Metro Division, followed by 24 point Carolina and 23 point Philadelphia. The two wildcard teams are currently 25 point Tampa and 23 point Toronto. Uh, then then you have 22 point Washington, 22 point New York Islanders, 22 point Buffalo Sabres, 20 point Pittsburgh Penguins, 20 point Montreal Canadiens, 19 point New Jersey Devils, 18 point Columbus Blue Jackets, and 16 point Ottawa Senators all on the outside looking in. On the Western Conference side, you have 30 point uh, Colorado Avalanche leading the Central Division followed by 26 point Dallas and 26 point Winnipeg. 31 point Vegas is leading the Pacific Division followed by 29 point LA and 29 point Vancouver. Uh, the St. Louis Blues are 23 points and the Calgary Flames is 21 points. Our two teams in the playoff spot followed by 21 point Seattle. 20 point Nashville, 20 point Arizona, 18 point Anaheim, 15 point Edmonton, 14 point Minnesota, and 12 point Chicago and San Jose. Uh, those teams are all on the outside looking in. So definitely it'll be interesting to see how this finishes out. Uh, but that's what I'm going to talk about for today. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this down in the comments. Are you surprised by any of the teams who have reached a 20 game mark? Are you surprised that the Bruins and the Rangers are doing overly well? Are you surprised that the Oilers had only 15 points in 20 games? Are you surprised that the Coyotes and the Predators are at 500? Definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. What were some of your most interesting games? over the past three days definitely love to hear your guys thoughts on that and what are some of the more interesting games you're looking forward to over the next week definitely love to hear your guys thoughts on that but that's what i'm going to talk about for today remember to like this video and if you're related to it, remember to subscribe down below we are so close to your subscribers thank you for all of your support oh never really those of you guys so don't forget to subscribe i also do a blog talking about news rumors analysis stuff like that so definitely check that out i'll link to that in the description below and i can't wait to see you guys all for the next video see you guys soon